Today, France is blue, Germany is silver, and Italy is, of course, red. Every major motor racing country has its own national colour, as is British racing green. And this is the story of how it all came about. Our green connection starts bizarrely with an American called Gordon Bennett, a rich newspaper baron from New York. And we can be pretty sure that the newspaper he ran wasn't the socialist worker because he once set fire to a large roll of money, complaining it wouldn't fit in his pocket. But Bennett also organised some of the world's first Grand Prix. These were road races which pitted nation against nation. And for the 1903 event, each country was told to choose a national colour. The French picked blue, the Italians black and the Belgians yellow. And the British, well, we were actually due to host the race that year. But because Parliament had set the national speed limit at a giddy 12 miles an hour, we switched the location to Ireland. And there, as a mark of respect to our Irish hosts, the British cars were painted green. As you can see from this rare archive. Ah, uh, yes, sorry about that. Anyway, look, here's the proof. This is a 1903 Napier, the very car that raced for Britain in that event. It's a priceless 102-year-old car that's capable of 80 miles an hour. But that's not what matters. What matters is this is the very genesis of British racing green. And then from there, things sort of jumped around a bit. The Italians nicked red from America. Meanwhile, the Germans, they switched to silver, ditching white, which went to Japan. Meanwhile, us Brits, well, we stuck to our guns. We stuck to good old green. There was never one particular shade. The 1930s Bentley blowers of Le Mans fame, for example, used a rich, dark tone. The colour is known as Brunswick Green, and it can trace its roots back to 18th century British riflemen. You know, Sharp, Sean Bean, all that lot. And in the Bentley's wake came Astons, Coopers, Lotuses, Sunbeams and Jags. Everywhere you looked, it was a sea of green. And then, in the 1960s, it all came crashing to a halt. And the villain of the piece was Lotus genius Colin Chapman. His 1968 Lotus 49 won the World Championship thanks to its radical new technology. But it was also the first British race car ever to carry sponsorship. Soon after, the money floodgates opened. And from that point on, British racing green would take a back seat. But if this story has made you all nostalgic and in the mood for a piece of that history, I've got some good news. It may not look like it, but this is Britain's newest sports car. It's a Van Wall. Or more specifically, a recreation of the Van Wall F1 car that won the 1958 World Championship. I'm driving a 1950s Formula One car. <laughs> As you can see, though, this one is completely road legal. And as you can also see, it really blends in. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but even though it's got the 1950s heritage, it shouldn't have the 1950s headaches. So underneath this Brill Cream and Bill Haley exterior, it's got a Jag XJS V12. It's got Jag suspension and it's got brakes that aren't made out of old nylons and bits of meshes. I mean, yeah, it's a bit twitchy around the back end, but six litre V12 on the car weighs less than a ton. Come on, what do you expect? It's loud, it's brutal, it's mad! Ah! 
Things calm down a bit, though, when you take a moment to appreciate the sheer level of craftsmanship. Fiberglass? I don't think so. The whole body is hand-rolled aluminium plate, and it's stitched together so beautifully that the entire thing looks like one piece of metal. Not all of this car was designed on memory lane, though. There are some fantastic modern touches, too, like these cunning tire tread mudguards and these Flash Gordon projector headlights. It's all handmade by a little company in Peterborough, and I suppose you think it's going to be very expensive. Well, it is. It starts at about 50 grand, which is TVR Cigaris money. But the Cigaris just can't create this much sensation. Listen to that massive V12 sucking away through those six downdraft cards. Fantastic way to mark 102 years of British racing green. Oh, great. It's a £50,000 hand-built aluminium replica of a 1950s race car, and you like the mud guns because they do. look like tyres. Thing is, though, you know that new um, A1 race series? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, that's nation versus nation, so why aren't they racing with national colours? Well, let's think. There are 25 nations competing. There aren't enough colours to go around. Ah, I see your point. Because Japan's got white, it's a bit of Cyprus going. No, it's white with a hint of apricot. Exactly, it's not yeah, that's Ethiopia, that's white with a hint of apple. Um, anyway, nice car, and now we must move on and put a star in our reasonably priced car. Now, I 